I'm going to leave this open for question and answer. I'd love to hear if someone is, is struggling with some attachments, maybe struggling with imposter syndrome. Maybe there's some of these things that you want me to elaborate on a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, so uh, lately, it's been kind of an interesting, uh, been kind of up down with our uh, just getting Zooms and actually getting um, really clients to commit. So it's been uh, have them lined up, do it, get it, send their invoice, they drop. And it's just been a consistent ball rolling, which is expected. So um, it's kind of ironic that this is the Zoom topic for the day. But I'm definitely kind of struggle with that. Like, why am I still doing this? But I keep going through the same motion. So just want to say thanks. This is actually kind of a really good, uh, really good Zoom that definitely I'm going to keep on a uh, keep on a replay. Andrew, thank you for sharing. And I think you're going to find that your clients, guys, this this just isn't for us. Your clients are struggling with the same thing. They've got attachments that, and I've tried all the diets, dude. You ain't any different. You know, think of the the mindset that we have in growing our business or over your clients have, or potential clients leads have that same that same thing. I'll tell you, kind of going back to that story. Oftentimes, the value that you bring is not anywhere close to being top of mind for you. Just like that pot, that pot was like, I'm a burden, I, I'm, I'm useless. I used to think that it was my certification. It was those things. You want to know what every single client almost told me? Not not every single one, but the majority of the clients, not one of them were like, dude, I really love your knowledge. The, the way you break down the Krebs cycle, you know what they said? They said, man, Jesse, I love your energy. I'm like, what do you mean my energy? That sounds weird. My energy. But what about the what about all the knowledge? That was the last thing on my mind. I used to think that, man, I, if I am ripped, man, look at the biceps and I'm benching Buicks, man, that's going to get me the clients. You want what my client said? Yeah, man, that's, that's cool, I guess. A couple of them were like, dude, you do bodybuilding? I didn't even know. Oh, you do power? I didn't even know. But I love the way you lift me up. That's cool. You can lift up some heavy stuff. I love the way you lift me up, Jesse. I, I never thought I'm like, what? You're paying cash money for me to affirm? For me to give you energy, crazy, mind blowing. And of course they are. Yeah, I used to think it was like, hey, I've got apps and macros. I can I can calculate your macros with my secret formulas. You know what the clients love? They're like, man, I just I just need to be held accountable. You know, I, I really love learning and just kind of being held accountable. So a lot of times what's contributing to your imposter syndrome has everything to do with your thoughts and absolutely nothing to do with the people that you're trying to help. Anyone want to share an attachment or something that they're struggling through? I bring this up and this comes up a lot is the, the, the money issue, mm. you know, especially with charging for like the, the challenge and stuff like, going back and forth about price like oh they're not going to pay that like right now i'm trying to do the nine week challenge attached with classes twice a week so they're actually people that are local so i'm actually able to connect with them better but struggled with the price because when i combine the price of the classes and the price of that together I'm like, oh, you know like people are going to pay this you know that's always in the back of my head mm -hmm. anyone want to share on that I think we could do a whole muddy uh, Zoom one day. So what I'll say is it's something that just happened recently. And this is crazy because I, I got done telling you guys this was an attachment. So a buddy of mine, um, zero education. This guy's not a coach, anything like that. Um, but he decided he wants to get into really good shape. And he texted me the other day and he's like, hey, man, I got my first client. Six, uh, 600 bucks a month. I'm like, man, I'm lifting him up. I'm like, oh, you're coaching. That's awesome. That is, that is so unbelievably amazing. And someone else was by me who has an attachment still kind of that they're like, well, wait a minute. He's not even certified. He's not this. He's not that. And I'm like, yeah, so what? What's your point? 
And they're like, well, didn't you used to think this way? And it was kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, I did used to think this way. I don't anymore. But the point that I'm making here is that he is not second guessing his price. He is not in the back of his head because if he was, his people will second guess that. So if we are internally second guessing, man, there's no way people can afford this. But hey, here's the price. That is going to come out. That energy is going to come out from our subconscious to theirs. And they probably won't. So you'll kind of create through your beliefs the evidence that you're looking for. Because if we believe that it's not worth it, like this guy's like, how could it not be worth it? Look what it's done for me. I should be charging double. I mean, 600, that is a steal. So think of like his pitch. When, when this this guy came to him, he's like, man, yes, you are gonna look better. You don't understand how great my life is, how my, my energy. So a lot of times, if we think that it's not worth it, there's not a chance in Haiti that they're gonna think it's worth it. But that's a tough, that's tough. It, it took a lot of money mindset training. And I still struggle with this. I still struggle with this. I think that's a constant one because that's always the biggest reason for people not to sign up or their biggest objection is usually money. And what's really tough is I went, I had a mentor in my life who loved me enough to give me the hard truth. And what this person said to me, which was true in my case, is they said, everyone has the money. They just don't yeah. see the value in what you're doing, or they don't see the belief in you, or you're not portraying that belief. And dude, that was, that, that type of ownership was really, really tough. I didn't really care hearing that from the person, but they That's later, what I was gonna say. I was going to say, it's very rarely not money. Um, right. They also just dropped $700 on the new iPhone. It's not a money. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are definitely people that are struggling financially, but if they're really, really seeing the value and they really understand what they could get out of this, they'd find the money. Usually, not everybody, but a lot more than we think. <laughs> the, the alcoholic or drug user or whatever, that's living in a cardboard box, finds the money to to fuel that that habit. Mm -hmm. People like Alexis was saying, we, we were in court the other day and it was this big sob story. We're watching these cases in front of us and this young lady, she had three kids with her and my heart was bleeding. I like wanted to go to the judge and pay her rent. And Erica goes, and you know, she's saying, oh, I don't have the money. Please don't evict me to, to this other person. And I, I almost started like bawling. I, I literally wanted to write her check and Eric goes, look at her nails. She goes, that's about $80 to get her nails done that way. Whoa, man, I'm, I just don't notice these things. Look at her hair. Her hair has been recently done. Look at her shoes. Those are name brand shoes. Look at what her kids are wearing. Oh, she has an iPhone. Man, I was like, oh, crazy. Yep. It's a, it's a priority thing. And we actually had a client, his a husband and wife actually uh, got a call the night before. Hey, we're getting to start the night. Send me the invoice, we'll Venmo, you do whatever we need to do. And uh, scrolled back through his Facebook just after he said, oh no, next morning, nope, we can't afford it. He actually went up and bought a truck about two weeks before, after he committed to that time. Brand new Silverado. I said, you seriously wasted your money on your Silverado. You already have three Tahoes. Yeah, actually but you needed the Silverado, but you came to me in tears saying, I don't want my daughter to call me fat. Apparently didn't want it enough. Then proceeded to ask, hey, has anyone had any experience with Ozempic? <laughs> America weight loss drug, no. My mom can't even get the dietary medication for that because she is diabetic because of those people. So a little bitter, but it's it was crazy to see the guy just like, oh, I'm just gonna buy a truck instead. You, you know what's, what is cool? And it we all hear it. And now, now you're hearing from me, well, what you mean when they stay, it's about the money that I'm the one not giving the value. I hate you, Jesse. I don't want to hear that because I, you know, but what's cool is we grow into the person by staying in the game, by staying in this journey, you will grow into the person that at your given price point right now, you just don't hear, I can't afford it anymore. You want to know what's going to happen when you do that? You're going to double, you're going to increase your price. And then guess what you're going to hear? Oh, I can't afford, I can't afford. Then you're going to hear that less and less if you stay in the journey. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be Hudson Wyckoff charging $1,500 a month. And guess what? Why isn't he charging 2000? Because he's hearing it's, 
I, don't, I can't afford it. When he stops hearing I can't afford it, he, he has grown into that person and then he'll charge 2,500. I don't, I don't want to be negative, but what I have found is, because I went through that too, where I just, I wanted to help so badly. I was like, okay, well, you know, I can do it and I would lower my price. And what I found after doing that is, as soon as, when you do that, the people that are complaining about the price and you do that for them, they're the same people that are going to complain about everything, every step of the way. They're going to be your most needy client. They're going to suck up all of your time and all of your energy, and they are paying less than the people that are not. <laughs> so you have to have enough confidence in your ability and the value that you bring to say your number with confidence. And if it's not a priority for them, you move on and you find somebody that it is because they're going to suck all of your energy out of you. And that is what's going to make you want to quit this not because they can't afford you. They're gonna, the people that can't afford you, the people you are so dying and desperate to help because you're a helpful person, because of course you are, otherwise you wouldn't be doing this for a living. They're gonna make you hate your job. And it's gonna feel like a job and no longer a, a freedom, time mm. freedom. It's gonna feel like I have a job. Why is this any different? They're always complaining and, and you're going to start throwing in the towel. So just stick to your guns. You know your worth, you know you know what it takes and if it's a priority for them they will find a way to do it and if they have to struggle to find a way to do it guess what they're actually going to do it and then they'll be successful and then you'll have a success story and then you're going to love your career and they're going to tell their friends about how amazing you are and your your, your business is going to flourish so you just gotta get out of your own way and stick to your guns yes sorry i just went on a rampage Not love you guys you. <laughs> Dude, thank you, Alexis. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have a microphone, but I'll just do, drop my phone. Uh, I was going to inc include our training on entrepreneurial guilt into this, but it does have something that backs up exactly what um, Alexis said. You guys are looking at this, this, this slide. This is psychology. This is studies. This isn't like mindset training. This is fact. Fact. People think wine tastes better when it's priced more expensively. They've done blind tasting with the box wine, you know, $6.99 box wine, and then the $200 wine, and they reversed the price. And people said they liked the more expensive or the box wine better because it had the $200 price tag. People assume that a higher price has better quality, which a lot of times it does, but it's not all the time. Did you see that, um, that experiment that Payless did? No. Did, did one of you guys post that? I saw this experiment that Payless did and it was called Palei, Palei, Palei. I don't know, they made it like French and fancy, but it was just Payless. Ah. Um, and they, they did this like brand new store opening and they had all their Payless shoes on these like glass displays. And it was like a $200 entry fee to get into the store. And yep. they upsold the same shoes that are at Payless by a thousand percent. And people were like, oh my gosh, these are such good, high quality. I can't wait to wear these. And people were paying for it. And they were walking out the store like, look at my French designer chic shoes and telling everybody. And it was a pay less store and they were pay less shoes. And mm -hmm. then of course they went by it around and told everybody and they actually gave everybody their money back. I don't think they showed up. I think it said, you, you pay what you find value in. Yeah, so. one million percent. Alexis, you're doing a money mindset training for us. So next time we do the calendar, oh, we're, just gonna put, we're just putting that on the schedule because this is this is, is is very very helpful for me to hear. Sounds I good. have a little bit of a story. So I had a I have a good friend that we like I see on a weekly basis, and she's a cardiac nurse. She has a 20 year old son who is not very big build at all. He was a soccer player. Um, he doesn't go to college right now. He just works at a Walmart distribution center. Um, he makes very good money, still lives at home, and he wants to build muscle. So he's going to the gym all the time. Well, he kept asking me some questions. Well, my husband was talking to her husband. They had him on speakerphone and he could hear his conversation with the wife or the mom 
my friend and the son. And she's like, well, I don't know why you would even ask her. She goes, she doesn't even have an education in it. And I'm a cardiac nurse. So why don't you ask me? And, you know, she's like, Brenda doesn't have, she don't know what she's doing. She never went to school for it. And Kevin told me, he overheard this conversation and told me about it. And I told Kevin, I said, first of all, I would never coach her son anyway, because 20 year olds, I mean, there might be some 20 year olds on here, but this 20 year old is kind of a narcissistic know-it-all. And he said something to me and I said, well, first of all, you have to put down the video games. And you, I said, what's ruining your physique right now? It's not the gym, it's not your dedication, it's your sleep. I said, you're not dedicating anything to sleep. And I said, when you get that right, come see me. But until then, I'll refer you to a different coach. (laughs) So, um, you know, because it's not my ability that I wouldn't believe in or I wouldn't have done three competitions, you know, as far as that goes, um, because I always believed in my coaches and I believed in myself and I believe in him. But until he gets that mindset right and knows, you know, exactly what he needs to do. But, you know, it's just kind of like a little bit of heart wrenching a little bit too, you know, because my husband believes in my ability, you know, and, but it's just the, the fact that, you know, some educated people, they may not say it to your face, but in the back of their minds, they're thinking, well, I went to school for, you know, I'm this and I'm that, I'm a lawyer, I'm a, Mm. I'm a, whatever it is, you know, I spent six years in school, you know, whatever, and you didn't. So I, my belief pattern is, you know, I probably know a little bit more there. She probably doesn't know as much because I spent six years in school and she didn't, I don't know. That was just kind of my little experience that, um, that was just, I don't know. I just kind of blew it off a little bit. But. It's interesting that you can start to po- see the attachments of others. And you know, what's really cool about that is you don't get as angry. You know, yeah, this person's being judgmental. I think they're being disrespectful, but you know what? Somewhere they're domesticated. That became then self-domestication. That became their belief. And now it's an attachment and it's so much so that it it, ju- it guides the joy or lack thereof in their life. It's kind of like, man. I mean, I implore you, if you ha- if you can identify attachments in yourself and, and reverse engineer. I'd like to save a couple things. One, just because you don't have a certificate or a doctor at the end of your name doesn't mean you don't have an education. We're here plugging in, learning, we're reading, we're studying, we're trying to, when you're teaching, you're learning. So <laughs> we are learning. So you just can't qualify someone's ed- education. And then another is I found belief in my prices when I said I'm a numbers person. So I sat down and figured out how much time I'm spending on these people, coaching their food logs, making making a great experience, studying for um, for our workshops and all the time I've spent studying to teach them. And when I broke it down like that, and thought of what I would pay someone to do all that for me in their field of experience, it's totally worth it. And you know, a big mistake that coaches make, I'm gonna paraphrase from this book that I'm reading, the sales acceleration formula. But this is, this just hits it right on the head. So there's a golf pro with 20 years experience. And then there's this other golf coach with uh with not as much and this is exactly what happens the coach with not as much feels like oh i gotta go prove myself to the client so when the client says hey i need help with my golf swing the coach that feels like they're not enough says this okay now try this grip and lean back a bit and put more weight on your back foot think one o'clock and two o'clock and on your back swing and turn your wrist over sooner as you strike the ball I don't, just reading that, I'm like, okay, do what, what, what? So we, coaches that struggle with imposter syndrome and self-belief, that's the kind of coaching they do. Here's the coaching that the professional's done. He says, fair enough, let me help you. Grip that a little bit higher and take a hundred swings. 20 minutes later, 
How did that feel? Wow, that felt better. Great. Now try putting more weight on your back foot and take a hundred swings. One, th isn't that the area model guys? And I feel that, and I've done this when I started coaching, it's like, man, if I'm not doing the crazy science and hey guys, it's great that we have everything that we have, but it's great that we have the science. That's awesome. We're, we're, we're developing this part of growth. But when you look in the client shoes, a lot of times that coach that's trying to prove themselves or prove the worth is actually hurting the client because the client's just like, whoa, whoa, that was a lot. Cool. Well, in closing, team, I would encourage you to look at the value that you have that you're missing out on. You know, like for me, energy, lifting people up, accountability, those are things I never, I would have discounted those things. Those things would be bargain basement. So you guys have things that you offer your clients that they absolutely love. Maybe they tell you, maybe they don't. But I'm going to promise you that it's not its not the letters after your name. It's not your apps. It's not your technology. So I'm going to, I would implore you guys to do that drill and say, you know what? These are three things that I've heard before or maybe that I feel that I offer other people. There's value to these things. These things level the people around me up because you guys absolutely have them. And that's why you will grow into a $249 a month coach into a 500 coach, into a thousand dollar coach, and you'll continue to grow as a coach because of those are your foundations, those things that you're discounting. Find those things.